Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. Today we're going to be looking at something extremely awesome and that's what I like to call the supercharged hybrid compressed cannon. So essentially what a compressed cannon is, is you get a bunch of TNT in the barrel which is something between 10 and 20 TNT, then you get your propellant which is launched out in the middle which is the 16 TNT, then you get TNT fired out the back which launches the propellant right against the slab and then that fires off and launches the TNT in a straight line anywhere between 50 and 300 blocks and this is an extremely accurate TNT cannon that causes a lot of damage and it's why it is one of the most favorite cannons on faction servers. So essentially what I've done is I've gone back to the drawing board and made a brand new version of this compressed cannon. As you can see it has one less dispenser but as you can see it has a brand new module for the sand. So unlike the normal hybrid compressed cannon that only fires two sand, this one fires a colossal 40 sand. And why is this necessary? It's not really necessary, it's just really really good if you're trying to go extremely long range because as you get longer range you can't fire as much sand or the sand is less likely to hit the TNT so if you want a really long range TNT cannon or a really long range hybrid cannon this is your go-to cannon and also this thing has been compacted down to pretty much the bare minimum so it is really the go-to cannon if you want to destroy any base where you have where they have something like 20 land so anyway let's take a look at this thing firing in action Okay guys, so we have a 20 high sand pillar here, and it's too wide so that makes it 40 sand. You can actually get this above 40, it's just 20 is a nice even round number, so I'm just using it for this case. So if we come down here and press the button, we can see 10 TSM fired out, and all the sand then falls, and then after they all fall, it pushes down into this barrel here, and then it's all fired out by the TNT. Okay guys, so now firing it onto some actual walls, so I've got this one which is just 10 blocks away and then we've got that one which is 100 blocks away but slightly lower and I'll explain why very shortly. So if we come here we can just see if we press the button now that the sand will fall and the TNT will come out and it will do the same thing that a normal hybrid cannon will do except it will have a slightly bigger bang, bang and there will be lots of TNT everywhere. So that's just the general hybrid can that you'd expect and that's pretty much exactly what the other one did before. But the thing that makes this extremely good and extremely overpowered is the fact that it's not differentiated on height. So you do not have, there's no set height. Like on the other one, you could have it had to be on the same level for it to actually fire into the thing. That's why we have two modes. This one, it doesn't have to be. It can be, it has a range of something like 10 blocks. So when you're doing long range firing, it doesn't have to be at a set height. So you don't have to do so much math to actually destroy the base. So as you can see this is a hundred blocks away and most of the time a hybrid can couldn't destroy this but this one can. So if we come back here and press this button here we can see TNT gets fired out then the sand gets pushed down etc then the sand gets pushed out shot way over here and then explosion happens. Quite a big explosion too and as you could see the sand actually shot up here but some of the sand went down here. So the sand could have hit here and some sand could have hit here and down here so the sand can hit just about everywhere on the vertical spectrum. So that means that TNT can shoot inside wherever the little line is for the water. So this makes this cannon extremely overpowered because you can, they could have as much land as they wanted. They could claim 10 land away from their base. They could have their main base and 10 land claimed away from it. And you could just go, beginners and then just completely destroy their base. Most people don't think of it like this so you can be the one person on the server that's going around raiding everyone and just destroying everyone's bases. So anyway now let's get on to the tutorial. Okay guys so now on to the tutorial. So this thing is technically 6x12 wide but if you really want to get technical it has three blocks here only three blocks but that technically makes it 7x12 but that doesn't really matter because this has got quite a few blocks and it's probably going to be a little bit more complicated than most tutorials. So it's got this diamond area here which is your main cannon bit, we've got this iron bit here and this gold bit here which represents where the redstone's going and we got glass here which just represents where there is no blocks placed in any of those areas. They're just blank void blocks inside the actual dimensions of the thing. But anyway, you're going to need some building blocks, some slabs, 21 dispensers, 44 red, 34 redstone, 19 redstone repeaters, 1 sticky piston, 6 pistons, a block of redstone, a button, and some TNT, sand, and 2 cobwebs for when you're firing it. That's also one of the downsides is you can't fire it over and over, you have to reload it each time by putting down cobwebs, which I'll show you how to do at the end of the tutorial. 
Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to do is build the barrel or the end of the cannon bit here and the first thing you're going to need is place down three slabs like so, then some blocks on the outside so you can't get interfered by any TNT flying off into any direction. Then you want to paste down your two main dispensers on the side here, then you want to come back two blocks like so, another block up, another block up. And then after that you want to come back here and place a piston like this and like this. After that you can place down your cobwebs. Then you want to place two more blocks on top like here with two more pistons like so on top. And this is going to be your main hanger bit. So after that you can just place your block here and then you can finish up your barrel by just filling up all the empty spaces like so. And that is going to be your main barrel so that the TNT can fire straight ahead in a dead straight line. Also guys, you need water. Very big thing. But anyway, the next thing we're going to do is going to build this big area here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to place two blocks here so it cuts off the actual TNT bit from the actual barrel bit. The next thing you want to do is you want to place a 2x4 area on each side of dispensers like so. And this is going to be your main propellant for the TNT to fire off the giant amount of TNT over here. The next thing you want to do is you want to come back to the back here, place some dispensers like so, like this, followed by a block here, a block here, a block here, and a block here. Next thing I want to do is place a redstone repeater here and here, and redstone along like so. This redstone is going to power these dispensers, and then after that we're going to place some redstone on the top like so, followed by, if you really want to, you can fill up this area here, there's no real need to, but it just looks nicer. And after that, one tick after this, all of these dispensers are going to activate, and this is much more efficient and much more compact than what I had with the actual the repeaters going to the side here. So that's just something really simple and actually fires all the dispensers. So this is what's going to be activating your main firing mechanism. The next thing you want to do is in between your repeaters place down your water and the reason for this is so that the TNT back here stays in this back corner and the TNT here goes flows all the way down to as close as this slab as possible. <laughs> Okay guys, somehow I managed to forget a comparator, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, we're going to need to raise this by one block because you're not going to be placing any more redstone down at this level where this glass is. So that's just to make your life easier. Next thing you want to do is you want to go back to the far left, place a block there with a button on top. That's going to be your input. If you're on 1.7, you can just place the button on the back or something. After that, you want to place down a piece of redstone here, and then five repeaters set to four ticks to vortex delay so we can make the actual clock on the very back side here. Then you want to place a comparator, right click it so it's in subtraction mode so you can get an infinite clock. After that you want to place down three redstone like so, a block here and a block here, one redstone here and a repeater here just set to one tick delay. This will create an infinite clock and it'll only stay active while the button's pressed so you'll get something like 16 TNT out and that will be your main TNT that fires out the barrel. So after that, you are pretty much done this part. Okay guys, so the next bit we're going to make is the bit that activates those pistons at the back there that push the cobwebs and the sand. So to do that, we're going to need our repeaters again, and we're going to place down three here, set to four ticks delay. Then after that, we're going to place a block. Then after that, we're going to place seven more repeaters set to four ticks delay. So we can have a total of 10 redstone repeaters set to a massive 40 ticks delay. After that, you want to place a block here and here, and then two blocks behind the pistons, so that way this redstone here can power this block, which will in turn power the pistons. So after that, you have built this little mechanism here. Okay guys, now onto the more complicated bit. We're going to build this little section here, which is going to activate that piston, and all the intricate circuits that make this possible. And to do that, we're going to be using some contraption or redstone and things, circuits and stuff like monostable circuits and just little things that you wouldn't normally see in TNT cannons but see a lot in normal redstone contraptions. Anyway, the first thing you want to do is destroy this block, place redstone here, this will still activate the dispensers. Next you want to shift click, place block there, more redstone on top, then you want to come along here, place one more block with redstone on top. Next thing I'm going to do is make a monostable circuit, so what you want to do is place a block here, a block past that, and a sand block on top. And if we place a repeater here, now this redstone will come into this piston, activate this piston straight away, then activate this repeater, sending out what we call a one tick pulse. After that, you want to place a block here, and then on top of that, place a sticky piston with a redstone block on top like so. Now that we have done this, we can take a redstone output from here. By doing so, we can place a block there, and four blocks along here like so, with redstone along every one of them. 
So that way, once this is activated, it will retract to these pistons here. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to place down two more blocks like so with redstone on top. Then we're going to make yet another monostable circuit by placing sand on top, a block here, with set into a repeater. Then we're going to place a block here with redstone on top and a block here and here with more redstone on top. As you can see, this block is actually going to power this monostable circuit again, but that will do actually no harm and that won't affect it at all because it's already activated and it's just a piston. So after this is activated, it will retract the sticky piston here because if it's a one tick pulse, it'll just press it out. And then after everything is deactivated, it will retract the piston. So that way, after all the sand has failed, it will re-extend re and that's why we need this sort of bigger and more complicated circuit. But all in all, this thing is actually still more compact than the hybrid compressed cannon I did. So this is probably going to be your new go-to cannon unless you don't have a lot of sand. So after you place your cobwebs down like this, to reload it, you just want to place down your cobwebs like so. Then you want to place a stack, a 2x2 two two stack of sand as high as you want. It can has a range between 1 and 23 TNT. So you can't go over 23 TNT or else this will just press the sand out. It won't break it, it will just push the sand out and you have to do a wee bit more maintenance. So I would stick around 20 sand just because that's a round even number and it's really nice to do. So all you have to do now is fill up all these dispensers with TNT and you're good to go. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. And if you really did like these videos, then hit that subscribe button. There'll be two every week. One, one on Wednesday and one on Saturday, being a TNT can and some TNT powered redstone on Wednesday. But anyway, goodbye from TNT. Day.